Hi boys and girls. Hi boys and girls. I hope you are well this Sunday. Auntie Anne, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Wonderful. We have been looking at Joseph over mm -hmm. these weeks. Auntie Anne, could you please remind us what we saw last week? Last week, Joseph was accused of doing something really bad and was thrown into prison because of what Potiphar's wife had said. But God was still with him. That's what we saw. Thank you. And seeing Jesus through that account, we mm -hmm. saw that even Christ sorry, took on, he, he, he was accused he was, of something. Yeah, he he would, yeah, well, he took on, Our yeah, sins. well, he okay. was accused. <laughs> yes, it's true. Yeah. He was accused of <laughs> and yeah. uh, mm -hmm. bore the punishment for something he did not do. And we saw Christ through that account and saw how even Christ, for something that he did not do, was punished. Mm -hmm. And Auntie Anne reminded us to say that we should give our lives to Christ because he bore our sins or he carried our sins and took them away from us and suffered for it. Mm -hmm. But today, boys and girls, we're going to now see what happened to Joseph while he was in prison. Mm -hmm. Remember, after uh, Pot Mrs. Potiphar accused Joseph, he was arrested and thrown into the king's prison guard. So which meant that there were the king's officials in there. And there were two interesting officials that Joseph met. Mm. And one more thing is that God granted Joseph success in what he did. So in Potiphar's house, he was head over everything. Guess what, boys and girls? Even in the prison, the prison keeper entrusted everything into the hands of Joseph. And whatever Joseph did, the Lord made it prosper. Mm. But before we go further into the lesson, <laughs> Auntie Anne, could you please open in a word of prayer for us? Okay, let us pray. Jesus loves me. I love Jesus. Father in heaven, we want to thank you, Lord, for the life of Joseph. And as we look at what he went through, Lord, we have our ups and our downs. There are nice moments and they are very sad and difficult moments. And yet, through it all, we read that you were with Joseph. Lord, be with us too. Be with us as we listen to your word. Open our understandings. Give us the faith and the trust that Joseph had in you to be steadfast and immovable and just trust you with all his heart father be with us now as we hear your word in jesus name amen amen boys and girls there is a song that i would like us to sing today mm -hmm. it is rise and shine and give god the glory so if you're seated boys and girls please stand up and let's sing rise and shine mm -hmm. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, children of the Lord. Sing it one more time. Rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine and Give God the glory, glory, children of the Lord. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, you know, sometimes my signs go here and there. I'm sure someone out there was with me. Okay, <laughs> boys and girls, you may take your seats. So oh, boys and girls, as I had mentioned earlier, we are going to see what happened to Joseph while he was in prison. Now, in as much as he was head over the place, Let's remember that he was still in prison, so it wasn't a very nice place to be. And Joseph must have longed for in his heart for a time when he could leave prison and come out of prison. And even through his life in prison, Joseph's heart was still devoted to God. Mm. And we see in Genesis chapter 40 that there was one interesting night when two officials that had made Pharaoh angry and were thrown in prison had two different dreams on the same night. And when they woke up the following day, they were sad. 
and mm-hmm. Joseph being a seemingly or who seemed to be a people person had asked them the, uh, in the morning when he saw that they were looking sad what the problem was now a little bit about these two officials there is one who was called the cup bearer or the butler and the other one who was the king's baker so the the butler what what would the butler do auntie Anne? so the butler would make sure that the king is safe in terms of whatever he was eating and he would be there to taste any of the food before the king ate lest it was poisoned um he would also be there to give the king actually to give the king but he would go and make sure that whatever is coming to the king is safe whoever is around the king is 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 someone who has been given authority to be in the presence of the king so he protected the king in that sense and he made sure that the food was prepared correctly and he would taste the foods before pharaoh um, ate it thank you that sounds like it was a very risky job i'm sure wow and the was explaining you must have been saying wow he must have ate a lot of food and tasted different kinds of foods but it could have been scary because if any of the food was poisoned it would have meant mm-hmm. it would have meant that he would die well there was another official who was in prison and that was the baker of the king so i'd like to imagine from the word baker he's one that would bake the king's bread yeah. or cakes or mm-hmm. handle the food maybe like some kind of chef mm-hmm. now we're not so sure what they did what offense they made to pharaoh that he was so angry but we know that they were thrown in prison the same prison where joseph was head over the prisoners and they had two interesting dreams that i will ask auntie Anne to read one after the other so starting with the first one from genesis chapter 40 um auntie Anne, could you please read from verse 9 to verse 11. this is what god's word says then the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, Behold, in my dream a vine was before me, and in the vine were three branches. It it was as though it budded. Its blossoms shot forth, and its clusters brought forth ripe grapes. Then Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup and placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said to him, this is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Now within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your place. And you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand according to the former manner when you were his butler but remember me when it is well with you and please show kindness to me make mention of me to pharaoh and get me out of this house for indeed i was stolen away from the land of the hebrews and also i have done nothing here that they should put me into the dungeon When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said to Joseph, I also, I was, I, I also was in my dream and there were three white baskets on my head. In the uppermost basket were all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh and the birds ate them out of the basket on my head. So Joseph answered and said, this is the interpretation of it. The three baskets are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift off your head from from you and hang you on a tree. 
and the birds will eat your flesh from you. Now it came to pass that on the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast for all his servants, and he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. Then he restored the chief butler to his butlership again, and he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hands, but he hung the chief baker as Joseph interpreted to them. Yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. Thank you so much, Auntie Anne. There is a lot to unpack in this passage that has been read. We see here two interesting dreams. Now, if we remember dreams from the Old Testament, starting from Jacob to Joseph, and even to the butler and the baker, we see that God would speak through dreams, boys and girls. But then, before the, the officials could even tell uh, Joseph his dreams, as I mentioned, they were sad after they had dreamt their dreams. And when Joseph asked them why they were sad, they said that they had dreams, but there was no one to interpret the dreams for them. And in verse 8, Joseph said to them, what interpretations belong to God? Tell them to me, please. So boys and girls, the first thing we see here is that Joseph did not have wisdom on his own to interpret the dreams that he heard. It was through God that he interpreted the dreams. So in Joseph asking, do not interpretations belong to God? It meant that it was God who gave those dreams and would reveal what those dreams meant. And even when the butler and the baker told the dream, God spoke through Joseph to interpret those dreams. And we see in the butler's dream, there were three branches, three vines. So a long time ago, and even now, um, oh, a long time ago mostly, they, the people then would drink a lot of wine, especially those in high positions, the kings, the rulers, and wine would come from great vines that were grown by the people. So being the cup bearer of the, the king, we see his dream was similar to what he did, a representation of the job that he had. So he explained to Joseph how those three branches were there, and in his dream, <coughs> and in his dream, he squeezed the vines and then presented that wine or that, um, that cup to Pharaoh and placed it in his hand. And from that, Joseph told him to say that the three branches presented three days. And in three days, Pharaoh was going to restore the cup bearer to his position. Or to restore means to give back. So he was going to put him back as the cup bearer of Pharaoh himself. But we remember what I said earlier. Although Joseph had this high position in the prison, he wouldn't have loved to stay there for a long time because prison is not a nice place. And he asked the butler to say, when you go out, please remember me. And as he said this, as, as it is said in the Bible, and get me out of this house. So that sounds a little bit desperate mm -hmm. to want to get out of a place. And I'm sure the butler was happy in that moment and may have assured Joseph that he would remember him. But then we see in verse 23 that after the butler had been restored to his position, that he did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. And then we now look at the other official, the baker. He heard what his friend's dream meant and he thought, oh, Perhaps I will also have a good interpretation of my dream. And in excitement, he told Joseph his dream. Him being the baker of Pharaoh, in his dream, he had white baskets on his head that had bread. 
and he dreamt that the highest, the, the, bread, the basket that was on top, the first basket, that birds came and ate what was there. His dream also representing his job and what he did. Joseph explained through God speaking to him that his dream, those three baskets were three days as well as the butler and meant that in three days he was going to be hung. He was not going to be restored to his position. And all oh, the baker was upset. And in a way we can see a form of rejection to what God was telling him was going to happen. And because it wasn't what he wanted to hear, he became angry with Joseph. And boys and girls, we see that what God says surely comes to pass. And indeed in those three days, the butler or the cup bearer of Pharaoh was restored to his position and Pharaoh put his cup in his hand. But as for the baker, just as the Lord had said, it came to pass and he was hung. Boys and girls, when God says that something will happen, it will happen. And though God doesn't speak through dreams right now, even through his word, everything that has been recorded in the Bible is true and has passed. And there are promises. By then, in the Old Testament, Jesus Christ was promised to the people. And even though Jesus was born so many years after the prophecy had been said, it still came to pass and God's word prevailed. Mm -hmm. Auntie Anne, is there anything else that you see in the lesson that we can draw? I think you have said everything. You know what, boys and girls? God reveals himself. And when he speaks, whatever he says will come to pass. So God's word is true and we can rely on what God's word says even today. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. So boys and girls, even for this moment, though the butler forgot him, we will see God willing next week how through this account, though it had happened years ago, the butler remembered Joseph after a while and something great happened through something not so great. But we will see what that is. So for now, boys and girls, let us remember that God's promises are true and they come to pass. Mm -hmm. And we can experience these promises in Jesus Christ. So we must give our lives to Jesus in order to know God's promises and for those promises to mean something to us. Mm -hmm. So for now, boys and girls, we will say bye. bye.